Hello and welcome to Good Evening Britain, a Force for Goods weekly show coming to you live from our studios here in the heart of the great British city of Glasgow with me, your host, Alistair McConaughey, broadcasting on all our digital platforms throughout the United Kingdom and across the world. We're bringing you quality pro-UK comment and analysis every Wednesday from 7 until 8 p.m., broadcasting on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on TikTok. And folks, we've got another great show lined up for you this evening. We have got a guest coming on at 7.30. It's the ever-interesting, much-respected Niall Fraser, who's been on before and who was out with us On Saturday, Saturday the 24th, just passed. It was a busy day and there's Niall there. He'll be coming on at 7.30, so stick around for that. And he's going to be telling us about his ideas and how he thought the Humza's Convention on Hopelessness went. And that was the so-called convention where the faithful, which is an ever-dwindling number now, faithful of SNP-ers turned up to be lectured at on how best to mess up the United Kingdom and to cause serious problems for all the normal people. So they were huddled together away from the good people of Dundee in the Caird Hall and we turned up at 9.30 just to give them a piece of our mind and we've got some videos of that and we've got some pictures of that which we'll get to. So folks, how are you tonight? Please do send in your greetings Please do send in your thoughts. What do you think about Humza's intention to use the British general election next year as some kind of de facto referendum, by which is meant some kind of, um, in practice, a referendum, to translate it from the Latin? And is that going to be his downfall? Or what is going to happen regarding that? Tell us what you think there. Let's say hello to some folk. Derek was first in tonight. Derek says he's his dad's home from hospital, so glad it's good news. I um, hope your dad's going to be okay, Derek, and I hope that you're okay as well. Niall, our guest, says it's going to be another good one tonight. It absolutely is. Debbie says, good evening, everyone. And Harry says, evening AFFG and unionists everywhere. Hope you're well. It's certainly great here in the county of West Sussex. Hello, Cat. Hope things are well with you. And to Stuart from Elgin. Stuart likes the T-shirt. Thank you, Stuart. It's um, by a company called David Watts, which I don't know if they're still in business, but I got this a few years ago. And it's a, it's um, lying rampant over a, over a union jack. It's certainly unique. I've never seen anyone with such a T-shirt before. Stephen says, Good evening from Belfast and a wonderful British evening to all fellow unionists from Christopher. Hi, Catherine. And hello to Ryan from the West Riding of Yorkshire. Cathy, good evening. And Dee Stanners, nice to see you, Jack, also. And Cathy, hope you're enjoying the show Kathy and Miss Missy says I hope you all keep in well good crowd in the house tonight well let's talk about Saturday's event now on the 24th the Scottish Nationalists were having a march in Stirling so we had a team in Stirling to count them to film them in order that we could do a proper count and we put the film up of them on our YouTube page and you'll find that in that link in the comment thread and of course we have to be there in order to ensure that the Scottish Nationalists don't lie about the numbers and of course they did lie about the numbers they said there was 5,000 on it but as you'll see from our excellent video it took exactly 8 minutes to pass our counting point and It was very strung out, so it's very easy to count, and it will take you just eight minutes to count, and there's 965 there. You might get one or two different from us, 
but that's the number that we counted, 965. So that's five times less than what they were saying, and it's five times less than the lie that the Sunday National printed. And you know, it really is time, as we've been saying for so long, for the British media to pick them up on that because we're providing the evidence. We're providing the evidence and it's irrefutable evidence. It's film evidence. You cannot literally refute it. Anyway, we're going to be continuing to do that. But that was a really good piece of activism that our Sterling team did. So thank you to the folk who sorted that one out. Meanwhile, the another team of 12 of us, we rocked up outside the Caird Hall which is that big hall in the central square of Dundee, named after James Caird, a, a, a jute baron, in memory of him. And it seats 2,000, but there was an awful lot of seats empty. Almost all of upstairs was empty, and downstairs was just um, scattered. I'm not going to give an estimation of the number of people, except that the number of people that we were addressing outside the care hall probably just numbered around about 200 or so, 250 at the most. And let's tell you all about that. So the doors were due to open at 10 o'clock and the meeting was due to start at 10.30. So we got ready and we met our activists at quarter to ten and at quarter to ten we started to regale the assembled throng of around a couple of hundred standing outside waiting to get in and we had our flags and we had uh, posters and I had the megaphone and I had prepared a 15 minute spiel of jokes basically at the expense of hapless Humba, Humza and his humongous hall of hopelessness I'd have to say the jokes actually went down very well. And the the nationalists, although they were also shouting at us, they were also uh, laughing at the jokes, I'm, I'm glad to say. Because what actually happened was the doors didn't open at 10 o'clock, or at least the doors opened, but what they couldn't do was get people in. And I don't know if they, what happened with a computer system or whatever, but a typical SNP farce. And I was joking away that, in fact, what the problem was, was that there was SNP MPs trying to get in, but actually nobody recognised who they were because they had never seen them on the telly before. And that was what the hold-up was. And um, it might have actually been that because there was a, a coterie of SNP MPs at the door standing about looking useless. So it might have been something to do with that. Anyway, they eventually found out that these were SNP MPs and eventually they started letting people in at 10.30 when, in fact, the um, convention had been set to begin anyway. And so that video was taken after um, sometime between 10 and 10.30. And this group who were on the SNP side decided to stand in front of us with a banner which has to be the most boring banner in the world it said let the people decide well I mean absolutely let the people decide so we uh, just stood beside them and said yeah let the people decide and if you had let the people decide in 2014 and if you had uh, allowed them allowed them the decision then you wouldn't be carrying on like this blah 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 etc etc you know what I mean just riffing on those sorts of themes and then they tried to stand directly in front of us. So Max got under their banner with with the AFFG poster. I was going through all the people who are going to be speaking at this, and um, including Keith Brown. And his title of his talk was going to be, How Can a Man from Oko Rake in £100,000 a Year by Repeating the Same Old Trick? And um, Jamie Hepburn was going to be next, talking about how thankful he is that the British Civil Service is not only paying a salary but paying an entire department to work out how to break up the United Kingdom and how much he thanks the British Civil Service and especially the British taxpayer for helping him and his department to break up the United Kingdom. And then Mary Black was giving the final speech, or as I said, the farewell speech, uh, which was entitled How an SNP MP Can Prepare for Unemployment in 2024. So you get the kind of gist of the things that <laughs> that we were riffing on. Um, 
Yeah, what a rabble those nationalists are. The word Keneally comes to mind. Paul says, thank you for defending our country. And Derek Hart says, oh, wow, singing the usual trash song, songs. Shame, SNP. Catherine says, brilliant. And it was brilliant work that you and others did. Um, so after we had done that, and once they had eventually gone in, and I had to be very careful what I was saying, of course, as I always say, because I wouldn't want to be accused of elder abuse, you know, so I had to be very, very careful about what I was saying on the microphone. Although I did point out that Hamza Yusuf had done quite a good job as far as diversity was concerned because he was certainly the most diverse person in the hall that day. In fact, he was the only diverse person in the hall that day. That actually got a laugh as well. Anyway, so yeah, let's put up some pictures now of our street stall because what we then did is we moved across to outside the Overgate Centre once all the SNP folk had got in and safely hidden away from all the normal people in Dundee we went to the Overgate Centre and there's some nice pictures here which will which will run up of our street stall and we were out with our street stall for about about three three and a half hours okay it's a good the dream team as somebody said there you go okay there we are. It was an absolutely beautiful day, as you can tell from those photographs. It really was beautiful. Good. Okay. And people were coming up. And a fairly unique thing, I think, really, to see that. I don't think many people had seen the Unionist stall there in Dundee. Okay. And that's good. Okay. With a big Union Jack, Scotland. There you go. Look at that. That was just taken after um, a chap there on the far right with the red cap and the lady with the big Scotland flag. They decided just to, to walk around the square at lunchtime when the delegates came out. They just went over and they walked around the square. And you can see you, the, the chap there with the camera was doing a live feed. And that was live on our site as well. So it was an exciting day all around. Okay. And then, oh, that's a good. That's 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 one for the magazines. That one. That's that's excellent. In the summer sun, the AFFG flags flying, flying well. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> lessons from that. Um, towards the end, uh, just as the people were going in, I did get the chance to talk to one or two of the SNP people, and there was something that kind of depressed me when I when I began to think about it but they did um, the person I spoke to for example at least two three people were really angry that the English Supreme Court had prevented Holyrood from having a second referendum and I said to them no no it's it's like the United Kingdom Supreme Court it's not a court set up by the English to dominate Scotland. It's the highest constitutional court in the United Kingdom and it's made up of judges from Scotland, England, Northern Ireland and Wales, each of whom represent these slightly different legal traditions gathered together, making judgments from their British wide perspective. And that was, they just would not accept that. And one of them said to me, he goes, well, look, when was the Supreme Court set up? And I goes, well, it was set up on the 1st of October. 2009 under Gordon Brown's premiership and he goes yeah it was set up then and he goes well it was only what they did I, I, I explained was that previously the court had been located in the House of Lords within the Palace of Westminster and the judges at that time the name given to them was Law Lords and when Blair and Brown came in, they wanted in their minds to clear up this slightly messy circumstance. So what they did was they renovated one of the buildings outside the Palace of Westminster and they moved the law lords from the rooms in the Houses of Parliament where they would usually adjudge matters. They moved them into a separate court and they called it the Supreme Court. But the legal tradition was just exactly the same, but they changed the name and they rebranded them. 
But Britain had had those law lords going way back since the time of Union. But they didn't know anything about that, and they were not accepting it. They were not accepting it. No, this was the Supreme Court that was set up by Gordon Brown, basically, to dominate Holyrood and to confound Holyrood to ensure that it doesn't get its way. And I was trying to explain, no, it's nothing to do with that. It's, it's the Constitutional Court of the United Kingdom, and it did not rule against the people of Scotland. It ruled simply that Holyrood, if it was to have a second referendum, would need the permission of the British Parliament to do so. But all of that was just... It was, it was depressing because none of it was accepted and they were just happy to know it was an English court and this English court was stopping Scotland getting its way. And you know what? That's the narrative. That's the story that's promoted by the SNP MPs. It's promoted by Hamza Yusuf. It's promoted by large elements of the Scottish media. And it's like it doesn't even seem to matter. The truth of the matter is just who's got the loudest bullhorn to promote the these sorts of facts and their angle their angle was much more edgy and much more likely to um, get people emotional than my angle which was the reasonable correct angle about the history of the british constitutional court and that's politics for you you know and we've always got to remember that because sometimes you think oh well we're actually right uh, you know historically but often that can take a backseat simply just to emotional attitudes and that can be exploited, which is really, really worrying. Um, so there's no level of, um, there seems to be no level at which that won't happen. So we have to always be careful. Now, what happened on this day on the 28th of June in 2011? Something quite sad for all us aviation fanatics, but the Hawker Sidley Nimrod anti-submarine aircraft was officially retired from service and those of us who grew up in the 70s and 80s will have seen the Nimrod many of us saw the Nimrod some of us even saw it flying over and it was pretty exciting to see it was like the big Vulcan as well that you often saw flying over in the skies and the Nimrod was an absolutely beautiful plane which was introduced in 1967 and um was primarily an aerial platform for anti-submarine warfare operations, and um, it got it got uh, retired from service. But the good news is that a new fleet of nine Poseidons were actually introduced, but not until 2020. So between um, 2011 and 2020, nine years, Britain didn't have any of that aerial anti-submarine warfare capacity. But we do have them now. At least that's what we're told anyway, if you believe the system. Got a really nice painting here in the office um, through in one of the other studios. And we'll just bring that up just now. And this is called The Mighty Hunters, this particular um, picture. There it is there. And that's a Nimrod flying over a rock hall. And in the background there, you might see in the sea, there's a Soviet sub, which is what the Nimrods were always hunting. And in the air there, there's a little vignette, as it's called, with British troops, which alludes to the Nimrods' tour of duty in Afghanistan as well. And that's a fantastic aircraft. We've got that print in the office here and that print is by Ronald Wong who is an aviation an aviation artist and you can buy that as well from his website from Ronald Wong's website at ronaldtkwong.com that one's called The Mighty Hunters now let's look at our comments what have we got here Derek loves what we did in Dundee thank you Ryan says, if the present voting trajectory continues, then it would suggest the SNP are heading for an electoral hemorrhaging at the next general election. However, if this hemorrhaging comes at the advantage of the Labour Party, we may yet see a revival of successionist politics for Gordon Brown's constitutional proposals would once again further such an unwanted, egregious agenda. That's so. Now, we wrote an article about 
their intended plans, the Labour Party's intended plans. And they have lots of uh, ideas for more devolution for Scotland and Wales. And they're also going to abolish the House of Lords and replace it. This is beyond belief, but replace it with a a so-called Assembly of the Nations and Regions, which will be elected and which will, although Gordon Brown says it won't, but it will become uh, an alternative power source to the House of Commons itself and will just be basically um, a rival to the House of Commons. Of course it is, because it's going to be another elected body. So of course it's going to be an elected rival. Anyway, the, the, as we know from Labour, they never learn, unfortunately. Um, talking, about the, talking about the article that I wrote about Labour's plans, this person sent a really nice um, message. Afternoon, Alistair. Hope you and your splendid team are well. I've just read your brilliant demolition of Gordon Brown's New Britain Renewing Our Democracy. Brown's report is folly. It gives the SNP a lifeline when it is, as you assert, in deep trouble. Thank you so much for this superb demolition job. I hope it gets sent out as widely as possible. So you'll find the links to that, which is entitled A Unionist Eye on Labour's Plans. You'll find the link to that in the comment threads in Twitter and also on Facebook. He continues, I was on holiday recently and I met a lovely couple from Edinburgh and we got on famously when we discovered our common detestation of the SNP. <laughs> Great, thank you for sending me that message, sir. And in, in that regard, Tom Harris wrote this recently in the Telegraph. Scotland is now the testing ground for net zero madness. And he pointed something out which is worth saying is that Virtually every conceivable policy failure of the SNP can be laid at Westminster's door. When this happens, there is far less danger of voters holding ministers accountable for the very real costs of, for example, their failures. And he points out a counterintuitive consequence of the devolution situation was that was supposed to make decision makers in Scotland more accountable is that it has, in certain areas, had the opposite effect. So rather than actually making people and politicians in Scotland more accountable, what it has, in fact, done is is just simply allowed them to pass the blame to Westminster and get away scot-free, as the expression has it. Now, let me bring in our guest. So, folks, please do welcome our guest tonight, which is Niall Fraser. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a splendid evening. Good evening, Niall. And, yeah, we are having a splendid evening. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. And uh, thank you for, for all the activism that you did as well at the weekend because you were busy yourself. You, you had a good, um, a good presentation just before we arrived, actually, you were making your presentation to camera, and we've got that presentation, which we'll we'll bring up in a couple of minutes. But do you mm-hmm. just want to uh, tell the viewers what was your thinking behind what you did? Yeah, uh, so with us? Um, uh, it was a wee bit of work. It wasn't as much work as you put in, Alistair. I'll grant you that. You were absolutely on fire at the weekend. Um, so I mean, we both went up to Dundee, uh, my, me and your fine self, over the weekend, where you know hapless Hums or useless was having the, his party's big uh, let's waste everyone's time convention. I mean, we know that the SNP have moved nowhere closer to their so-called goal of independence over a, um, a, almost an entire decade, and even in actuality, they've moved further and further away from their indie, their their goal. Uh, further away from voters, further away from normal Scots, and further away from reality, uh, whether reality bend the GRR stuff. So when I was in Dundee uh, with you, I had a novel thought, you know. Um, I had the idea for Scotland's new currency, because the SNP, I mean, love them or hate them, they can't come up with any ideas for the new currency. So I thought I would step in and present a currency that the SNP are very, very familiar with. Some would say the SNP have been using this currency for years and years and it's called 
the brown envelope. So if you want to bring up the uh, video, that would be perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll bring we'll bring up that video of the the brown envelope. The brown envelope. Here we are in Dundee at Care Hall, where there's an independence convention brought to you by Humza Yusuf and the SNP. Although after all these years, they still don't know what the currency is going to be. But that's for fine because I know the answer. It's been staring us in the face all this time. I mean, the SNP want to push the envelope, but they're actually. I mean, why not literally push envelopes? Brown envelopes full of cash. Why not? This is the currency of the future, guys. This, without brown envelopes, guys, Scottish industry would grind to a halt. These envelopes lubricate the gears of industry here in Scotland. We don't know who these names belong to, but, you know, little Miss Sleeker, Mr. Weather. I mean, I just picked these up from SMP HQ. I have no idea who these names pertain to. No idea. No idea. No idea. No idea. Maybe if you know who they are, maybe you have a, a suspicion on who they are. Uh, but the thing is, the SMP are actually destroying Scotland. They are. With brown envelopes and corruption. When we asked the, the SMP to push the envelope, we didn't they? I mean it literally. Uh, and, you know, before you start, we trialled white envelopes. We really did. But Hamza despises anything white, so we had to go with the brown envelopes, guys. So this is me, Niall Fraser, reporting from Independence Convention. Oh, God. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yep, so you would have understood the idea behind the whole thing. Uh, I've got some of the envelopes here, so if uh, a wee treat for your viewers, uh, force for good viewers, you tell me in the comments who these uh, envelopes pertain to. Uh, so this one, Kit Kat, if you can guess who that is. Okay. Uh, uh, useless. I don't think that's, that that's an easy one. Much. Uh, I think that is an easy one. Uh, Captain Pugwash. This might take a wee bit of thought. Uh, steak Bake. Code name steak bake. I think I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's about all we've got. Mister Weather as well. I can see. But effectively, what we do, what we did, we took these envelopes and we stuffed them full of uh, fake cash to make it look real. Oh yeah. Uh, but you know, I've missed a trick. Basically, you know, um, originally uh, we wanted to get the footage of me handing Hamza a brown envelope. Uh, but, of course, he's timidly shuffled into the back door of the cared hall, Alistair. Can you believe this? Uh, I mean, if you were, imagine being the First Minister and having to skulk around Scotland like a criminal. <laughs> it's it's yes. weird. I mean, imagine coming in the back door of places. It's wild. And, again, a few things about the weekend um, actually annoyed me, but it's only through hindsight that you notice these things. But, you know, we should have had a stall set up selling burner phones, Alistair. Uh, we missed a massive <laughs> trip there. We would have sold hundreds and hundreds of burner phones. They would have been going like hot capes. Um, and we should have had a big sandwich board, uh, or at least I should have had one that says, I would like to buy politicians. Uh, and then walking about the Independence Convention, it would have been fantastic. Um, but equally, uh, I mean, my uh, efforts were totally unmatched uh, by yourself. It was amazing to see yourself. Um, uh, it was amazing to witness it. Causing absolute carnage uh, simply by stating facts and your marvellous megaphone usage. So uh, all credit to you, Alistair. And again, uh, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, just walk right into the lion's den and start, you know, preaching the truth. But uh, you certainly have the courage, my friend. I mean, overall, um, uh, just before you come in, overall, it was a really, really fantastic weekend. We managed to have a good laugh. Um, I think the... Hapless, hapless Humza's wasted time convention was overshadowed by your work, my work. But if not by any of us, there was a woman in the independence convention who basically stopped the whole thing, who was a victim of this uh, Surgeon L. Jamel at NHS Tayside. Um, so that uh, overshadowed the whole event. Um, and he actually stopped the convention uh, to address this woman and then starts putting his hands all over basically saying, oh, go and shush, it's my show, hen, please. <laughs> uh, um, so it was a horrible thing to say, uh, to see, rather. Um, 
because the woman is clearly distressed in the whole situation. Um, but yes. again, I have to commend you and your courage, Alistair. There was a wee bit of it was so you you described it as chaos earlier on, but it was organised chaos. Yes, yes, it, it absolutely was. Well, um, you get used to doing things. It's quite easy to do it once once you do it. But um, what I like about your stuff is you're always very thoughtful. You're always coming up with with clever little stunts and ideas that that uh, that's a a gift that you've got. You know, a, a lot of people don't have have that. I don't really have the that sort of. Uh, mind but you've definitely got it um so good for that this chap says captain pugwash is that alex salmond oh that's not who i had in mind that's not who i had in mind okay well um don't tell us don't tell us um if anybody knows who captain pugwash is in the snp tell us if anybody knows who steak bake is surely that's surely an easy one yeah uh and if anybody knows who kit kat is um, you need to. Oh, yes, I guess you need to be there. kind of in on these things. You mm-hmm. need to be following social media to to know. And uh, useless, obviously. We we know who that is. Um, Stuart says Hamza wore a new tie. Oh, I, did I didn't, he? I didn't notice, but that certainly that certainly makes a, a mis, uh, good. Mm-hmm. Folks on TikTok, you won't see this interview because. Um, it's not being viewed on TikTok, but you'll see us on youtube.com forward slash UK, a force for good. Uh, uh, Stuart McDonald's got the first one, steak, bake, Blackford, yes. Uh, that's one down. We've still got uh, Captain Pugwash, Kit Kat. There you go, yeah. Stuart's got, Stuart's got that. D Stanners has got Kit Kat. It's oh, of Mary, course. Mary Black, yeah. See the captain. Nobody's getting the captain pugwash one. Nobody's getting one. that. It's, it's not who I'm imagining. Angus Robertson. No, it's not. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, cool. But I mean, you see, you see what I'm trying to do with these stunts. So I was thought it's um, uh, it's all about trying to make the public think. Um, uh, and if you I, again, I'm trying to display something at the same time. I'm saying, well, it's dual prong. One, they've not got a currency. This whole time, ten plus years of planning. Alistair, more, more than 10 years of planning, and they've still not got a currency plan. They don't know. Um, so I'm pointing that out in the first instance, and then I'm pointing out just the blatant levels of corruption we've got here in Scotland as well. Uh, so, I mean, why not? Why do we not just bring in the brown envelope? Uh, I mm. mean, it, it's, it's almost a joke saying uh, these lubricate the, the gears of the industry, these, uh, these keep Scotland going. But, you know, there's an element of truth in that, and that's why it's a, a good joke. Um, I, I think everyone knows that there's a huge level of corruption here in Scotland. It's just, it's just about pinning it on uh, the party. Everyone seems uh, it's it's definitely Westminster, it's definitely Holyrood or whatever. You know that seems to be the argument in Scotland now. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, I did have a conversation with a few independent supporters during this um, this weekend. Yeah, uh, and yeah, tell us about you know, that. well. Most of them, uh, the, the ones that were standing outside Care Hall, uh, I was banging on about the SNP, and they're saying, well, it's only part of the independence. I said, well, it's absolutely not. So I, I can, uh, and a lot of these people really dislike the SNP as well, but they just see it as the only bridge towards their idea of independence. Uh, and this is why the SNP have gotten away with what they've gotten away with all this time. Uh, because they seem to have the... Uh, well, they've, they've got their voters tied up. They've got them around their finger. They, they've nowhere to go, really. Um, uh, and they, they can basically monster their own voters time and time again, and they'll just have to come back. They would just physically have to come back. So I think we're, we're almost at a turning point where uh, even their own supporters, uh, you mentioned the d- diminishing numbers and stuff like that, uh, they're, they're going to diminish to such a degree that there'll be no money left, there'll be no big conventions anymore, uh, and it's all just sadly going to go away. Uh, well, not sadly for us, but sadly <laughs> for them. Um, it's it's going to be the last the last one at put the lights out situation, I think, with SNP. That's uh, that's an interesting analysis. I I hope that that you're right there. I would say about your stunts, for example, these are stunts that can be done again as well. And um, we didn't get you didn't get Hamza going in this time, mm-hmm. but you know there'll be another time. Uh, when you will get 
him yeah. on that. So, you know, keep all your all your stunt stuff together. Don't throw it out because these things can be recycled. And Scotland's Absolutely. all about recycling, as they say. Now, um, Stuart says, is it Ken Brown? I think you mean Ken Keith Brown. Ken Brown, no, no, no. Think, think more senior position than that, Stuart. The, the most senior, almost. Crikey. Crikey. Okay, good, good. Um, now, the, um, did you learn anything when, because I noticed you did speak to one or two of the SNP people outside. I mean, what was your... Well, initially, sort of... um, there was almost a fight broke out, wasn't there? So, um, after the, uh, the, the situation had quelled, I wanted to go and speak to the guy who's obviously animated enough to try to start a fight with someone. Uh, this, so, the, um, if, if I can just... If I can just uh, quickly butt in there we've got that video footage on one of our action cams but i haven't gone through it yet but this is this is a guy who just lost his head and came yep. up to one of our people just like straight in for a fight and this is this is an older guy who's like in his probably 60s yep. right he's not a 14 year old teenager and it, he needs to be um you know, he needs to sort himself out because he's an angry old man and you shouldn't be getting to 60 and still be angry. You know, that's yeah. something you can go through a teenage years and, and you know, mm -hmm. whatever. But not when you're 60 year, years old. Anyway, and there were several, there were several of those as well. And one guy was saying he was wanting to start a fight with me. And I goes, look, mate, you're a fully grown man. Yeah. And he goes, I know I'm a fully grown man. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, and, it's, it's, it's crazy, isn't it, Arthur? Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, this guy comes up to one of ours. I stood in the way of him to stop him. And then there was a couple of coppers that were hanging about, which is which was good. And um, they just took him away and gave him a talking to. But he still went into the conference. But you're saying you went up and spoke to him. Yeah, I went up and spoke to him. I actually held him outside the conference for a long time. So the guy... I mean, uh, again, I'm, I'm like, what What in this guy's mind has uh, made him start a fight with another uh, another Scott uh, <laughs> uh, over total nonsense, right? So this guy, um, he, first of all, uh, I'm saying, he's saying, Westminster's corrupt, Westminster's corrupt. And I'm saying, well, yes, I agree. And he says, well, what are we fighting about? Uh, well, I, I'm saying, well, Horrid's also corrupt. And they don't think that uh, we should clean up our own back garden before we go pointing fingers elsewhere. And that seems to be the line that set them free. Uh, that seems to be the, the thought process that I managed to uh, persuade them round to, is that, I mean, I, I'm not the best, biggest fan of uh, Rishi Sunak and the Westminster Tory government, not at all. But likewise, uh, we, we can't point fingers at them without pointing fingers at ourselves in Scotland as well. And that's what SNP uh, voters need to start thinking about is, actually, let's look at ourselves for a minute. What have we done? Um, everything seems to be getting worse up here. And it can't all be done at Westminster. I mean, a lot of them will still claim that, but a lot of it can't, uh, can't literally not be. So um, I think pointing that out to um, independent supporters that you're not the, the biggest fan of Westminster almost gets you a wee in. Uh, I mean, it starts the conversation. So once you've started the conversation, then you can start to wind them in uh, and say, well, actually, uh, you know, the SNP are quite corrupt as well. Or, you know, the, the, this whole time, uh, uh, Hollywood has been acting uh, crazy. I mean, all the money that's been spent uh, on ferries, and we've not even got two floating vessels yet. I mean, I'm just calling that corruption straight up. Um, but it's it's important to sort of uh, throw cold water on this dialogue. That's what I was trying to do up, up there, Alistair, is that there was a, a lot of people on fever pitch, a lot of people, um, uh, blood's running high, that we just need to throw cold water on it for a second, uh, just slow down uh, and have a conversation because we're not too far away. We aren't. Uh, it's just that um, we've had successive Tory governments that people are very sick of. Uh, and that's just, I, I think it's positioned SNP voters to be more entrenched. Uh, and I think the longer this goes on, the more entrenched they'll become. But it's important to try to throw cold water on it and, and talk these people down after the ledge, almost as it, as it were. 
Yeah, good point. Yeah, no, that's a very good insight, and I agree with that. You definitely would. We do not want to be positioned to be seen as somehow defending um, the behaviour of MPs, and this is something that I'm always at pains to emphasise: is that as as pro UK unionist people, mm-hmm. we don't um, support the UK because of the politicians per se. We support the ideal of the United Kingdom, the ideal of all the people of these islands working together in as much unity and solidarity as we can muster, rubbing along where we can't necessarily work together, but not um, at each other's throats. And the centuries have brought us to the to the situation that we're in just now, which is the United Kingdom, which is the best way we've found of rubbing along together. For example, as I actually said on the megaphone, I said, what you guys want to do is you want to break us up and then the very next day you want to approach what's rest, what's left of the United Kingdom and then you want to figure out how best can we cooperate economically and legally and diplomatically and militarily and socially and culturally well that's what we're doing right now you know this yeah. you want to break it in order to build to build it back up again you don't make something better by breaking it and then the very next day trying to glue it back together again we've already got a system of cooperation and we've even got a name for it it's called the united kingdom so let's stick with what we've got and try to make that better and that was one of the messages that i tried to get across and i think i think that's a fairly good a fairly good message really in in many ways certainly Um, resonates with a lot of people alistair mm. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know, I think a lot of people think unionists. Oh, you you support Tory government? Oh no, wait. So you support you all? You automatically condone every every single action Westminster actually has? No. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we get uh, we get that a lot on all our social media course. channels every day. Oh, you're Tories. You support yeah. the Tories. Um, or it, I mean, it's just, uh, and you have to say, well, no, we support the United Kingdom. Yeah. We don't necessarily support the the politicians. Um, is it Colin Beatty, Captain Pugwash? No. So, call, no. Uh, so Captain Pugwash alludes everyone. I'll, I'll let people know at the end if nobody's got it okay. by the end. Okay. But even more senior than Colin Beatty. He was a signatory on the... the oh, the I know accounts. who you mean. I know who you mean. <laughs> it's giving it away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll be interested to know why you... Uh, calling that person that name I don't know, when, you, when, just, when I, you when you explain it when you explain it. Uh, um, I always Stuart, yeah, it's, Stuart it's says funny, no. Swinney, no, no, no. Although he's a good candidate, actually, Stuart. He could also be Pugwash. Yeah, what could did you did you have an envelope for him? Uh, no, for Swinney. I mean, um, hmm. I call I him sl- some swindler. I call him Slender Man because <laughs> there's a there's a kind of horrific. Uh, US. I know what you're talking about. The game, the um, uh, comes and gets you in the forest. Yeah, yeah, the guy that gets you in the forest, and, and I always think Swinney looks like Slender Man. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Catherine's getting it. Peter, Peter. Catherine Rainey says Peter. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Morell. Yeah. What? Why uh, did you um, give him that moniker? I always thought, you know, uh, he's he's got the most Captain Pugwash look about him. I think if you Google Pug, Pugwash, you know, <laughs> baldy sort of captain, uh, okay. he, he just looks very very similar. I think. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess so, I guess so. Um, yeah, well, I um, as I say, I, I spoke to one person outside. Well, I spoke to three, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but two of them were going at me about how the Supreme Court was an English court and this this English law was overriding Scottish law. And that's, a, that's something I'm going to need to kind of lay out one mm-hmm. of these days. But that's confusing. That's confusing two things entirely because Scotland and England have slightly different legal traditions. Yeah, of course. That doesn't mean that the British Parliament can't make law for all the United Kingdom together, of course, of course, of course it can, and and that law, uh, if it's broken in one part, 
of the United Kingdom will be adjudged either by a Scottish court or an English court, and they'll look at it through their particular historical lens. But uh, the differences are not that much, and the British Parliament does make British law, but the 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 um, the legal system itself. If you get a job as a lawyer, you in, in in England you'll be studying predominantly English law, and in Scotland you'll be studying Scottish law. But that's so that's but that's one of these things that confuses people, and it's it's one of these kind of British quirks. But it's certainly not right to say that, as many of them do, that the British Parliament's an English Parliament that makes English law that shouldn't apply in Scotland. It's, that's just it's ours completely as well. crazy. Absolutely, completely ours, crazy. our uh, court. Exactly, <sighs> exactly, exactly, yes, yes. Um, Catherine says that Peter Morell looks like Penfold. Oh, Penfold would have been a great one, Kat. Catherine. You should have wrote the code names. Uh, Penfold <laughs> uh, is a perfect one for uh, uh, Peter. Uh, yes. uh, but uh, I mean, we do plan on uh, doing more of these things. Um, uh, like I said, I've got quite the imagination for stunts. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think we want to get, um, uh, we want to infiltrate with the SNPR and dissuade their voters away from them in real time. Yeah. Uh, right as they're standing in front of them. Uh, because I think people are coming away for the SNP. Really, uh, they're starting to lose their uh, rose tinted glasses. They've taken them off. Abs- absolutely. Well, let's let's stay in touch about that now. Now, let me just remind the viewers and the listeners uh, of your Substack, which is Niall Fraser. Now that's N I A L L F R A S E R eight. Niall Fraser eight dot Substack dot com, and you put articles on there occasionally you're mm-hmm. also got a twitter which is twitter.com forward slash nile fraser eight and you have got a kofi.com now what this is is people can go to that and they can metaphorically i think is the word buy, buy, you, a coffee, a cup, yeah. buy you a coffee and that's ko hyphen f i dot com forward slash Niall Fraser eight and as I say that's Niall N I A L L yeah Fraser F R A S E R so most that's... active uh, on Twitter that's the best place to get me really if you feel like supporting me please do but if you don't then I just send us a wee message <laughs> uh, a wee mess because we messages of hope are yes, always the goal uh, on our razors absolutely absolutely but if you want to stick in a couple of quid there you go it's K O hyphen F I dot com forward slash now Fraser 8 now let's have you on again as soon as we can and let's stay in touch and thank well, you very much pleasure for having me Alistair you'll have seen that I've picked up my own wee force for good badge managed to put it on for the show fantastic um, uh, so I, I finally came and uh, what well, didn't it finally came it came pretty quickly as well but absolutely beautiful so I thought I would honour it this evening uh, brilliant so, brilliant um, thank you Thank you. We'll put the link up for our little AFG Union Heart badge as well, which you'll see in the comment thread. Okay, so Niall, we'll say goodbye for now and we'll have you back on and we'll be joining you, no doubt, in activism. Okay, S- goodbye from now, Goodbye Take from care. Cheers. Fantastic. Niall Fraser, fantastic activist and a great thinker. Good, good, good. Christopher says, thank you, Niall, for all your contributions. And he adds that the Supreme Court is another benefit beyond the court of session. That's right, it's a a higher court. It's the highest court for civil law in, in the United Kingdom. Derek says, brilliant show. And thanks to our guest this evening. Now, I want to mention that we're going to be out twice in the next 10 days. On Saturday, we are going to have a street stall in George Square in Glasgow from 9.30 in the morning until noon. So please do say hello to us there. That's 9.30 to noon this Saturday, the 1st of July. 
and then on Wednesday the 5th of July we're going to be in Edinburgh because King Charles is coming to St Giles Cathedral where he is going to pre be presented with the honours of Scotland, the crown, the sword and the scepter of Scotland, which is something that is done after the, the coronation. Um, and so it's a big day in Edinburgh on Wednesday the 5th of July and if you'd like to join us, AFFG will have a, quite a few of our supporters there as well and we'll have some King Charles flags and things like that so if you'd like to join us, please do contact us at aforceforgood.uk Derek says we need an extended show when you've got great guests on Paul says we need workshops on how to communicate with SNP supporters, tactics on how to de-escalate conflicts. Good point, Paul. A lot of stuff we never got covered because we had such a fantastic guest and because we were talking about everything that we had been doing last Saturday. But as I say, we'll be back out this Saturday and also on Wednesday in Edinburgh. So we may see you then. Folks, we're not going to be broadcasting next Wednesday. OK, we're not going to be broadcasting because... It's the, the King's visit and we'll be in Edinburgh and it'll be too much of a rush to get back to Glasgow. And so we won't be broadcasting next Wednesday, but we will see you the following Wednesday, the 12th, when we will also have another guest, a new guest, if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. Okay, folks, it just remains for me to say God bless the United Kingdom and God save the King. See you next time.